In our introduction to proteolytic cleavage, we mentioned that digestive enzymes are examples of enzymes found inside our body which are activated proteolytically. And so this is what I'd like to focus on in this lecture. And I'd like to begin by focusing on a specific digestive enzyme found inside our body known as chymotrypsin. Now actually, we already spoke about chymotrypsin in detail when we discussed proteases and we said that chymotrypsin is actually an example of a serine protease that breaks peptide bonds on the carboxyl side of specific amino acids, those amino acids that contain bulky hydrophobic aromatic side chains. Now, chymotrypsin is initially synthesized in its zymogen form in the inactive form, and the zymogen form of chymotrypsin is known as chymotrypsinogen. And chymotrypsinogen is a single polypeptide chain that consists of 245 individual amino acids. Now, the uh, the chymotrypsinogen is not fully functional. In fact, it's not functional at all. And that's because the active side and the oxyanion hole of this particular zymogen is not yet formed. It's not in the proper conformation to be able to actually fit the substrate molecule. So what has to happen is this chymotrypsinogen has to actually be activated proteolytically and we'll see how that happens in just a moment. First, let's actually discuss where the chymotrypsinogen is formed. So, if we study the pancreas of our body, in the pancreas, we're going to find these special cells, exocrine cells, known as acinar cells. And it's the acinar cells of the pancreas which are responsible for forming this chymotrypsinogen as well as other digestive zymogens. And all these zymogens are essentially stored in membrane-bound organelles in membrane-bound granules shown in green. And so all these granules that contain the zymogens basically accumulate on the apex side of these acinar cells. And when the cell is stimulated by some type of hormone or some type of action potential, these granules basically exit the cell via exocytosis and they release all these zymogens into the duct. And then the duct basically empties out into a larger duct, which eventually empties out into the pancreatic duct. And it's the pancreatic duct that connects directly to the initial portion of the small intestine we call the duodenum. And once these zymogens are inside the intestine, they only begin to cleave those proteins when the zymogens are activated into their fully functional form. So the question is, how exactly is chymotrypsinogen actually activated proteolytically? Well, as it turns out, interestingly enough, it's actually another active digestive enzyme known as trypsin, another protease, that is responsible for activating chymotrypsinogen into its active form, chymotrypsin. So let's take a look at how that actually takes place by looking at the following diagram. So in part A, we basically have that inactive zymogen, the chymotrypsinogen. And notice it consists of 145 individual amino acids. So this is not functional because its active side does not have the correct orientation and the oxyanion hole that is used to basically stabilize the tetrahedral intermediate is not formed. And so what must happen is to actually activate the enzyme activity of this molecule, trypsin, and active form another uh, digestive enzyme basically must cleave at a single peptide bond this inactive chymotrypsinogen. And so what it does is it cleaves the peptide bond between the 15th and the 16th amino acid. Now, the 15th amino acid is arginine and the 16th amino acid is isoleucine. And so the bond holding these two amino acids is cleaved by trypsin. And this activates this zymogen 
thymogen to form something we call pi-chymotrypsin. Now, pi-chymotrypsin is not yet the fully functional enzyme. What pi-chymotrypsin does is, it goes on to other pi-chymotrypsin molecules and it cleaves those molecules at several sites. And what it does is, it ultimately removes two dipeptides from this molecule. So it removes a dipeptide from this region to basically remove two amino acids. That's why we go from 15 to, uh, to 13 and we also cleave in this section and we remove a dipeptide. And so that's why we have two uh, amino acids missing in this section. And so once we form these three individual chains, these three individual chains are held together by disulfide bonds. And now the active side takes the proper conformation and the oxyanion hole that is used to, to, to uh, stabilize that tetrahedral intermediate it takes on that perfect form so that once the active site is formed, it can actually fit that substrate intermediate. And once the reaction takes place, the tetrahedral intermediate can be stabilized by that fully formed oxyanion hole. So once again, we see that trypsin cleaves the peptide between uh, the peptide bond between the arginine 15 and the isoleucine 16, producing this active pi-chymotrypsin. Now, this active pi-chymotrypsin goes on, reacts with another pi-chymotrypsin, and that removes two dipeptides to produce a total of three individual chains. And these three chains, which are held together by disulfide bonds, basically constitute that fully functional fully active chymotrypsin molecule we call alpha chymotrypsin. Now, what's so different between the active alpha chymotrypsin and the inactive chymotrypsinogen? Well, as it turns out, the active side and the oxyanion hole are not formed correctly in this zymogen form. And what that proteolytic cleavage does is it allows for a localized conformational change to basically take place within this region. And as a result of that localized conformational change, that basically creates the proper conformation of the active side and also creates that oxyanion hole that is needed to stabilize the tetrahedral intermediate that is formed in that proteolytic reaction that chymotrypsin actually carries out. So we see that proteolytic activation of chymotrypsinogen causes a local conformational change that allows the active side and the oxyanion hole to actually form. So we conclude that by proteolytically cleaving this inactive chymotrypsinogen, so the entire structure of this chymotrypsin doesn't actually change too much, but because of a small localized change in this section of that enzyme that creates a perfect active site that can fit the substrate molecule and also creates the oxy and hole that will be used by the chymotrypsin to basically stabilize and decrease that transition state that is formed in that proteolytic reaction that is carried out that is carried out by the digestive enzyme chymotrypsin. Now, this is only one of the many different types of digestive enzymes that exist inside our body. And the reason we have these different digestive enzymes is because each digestive enzyme has a slightly different specificity. And we need all these different enzymes to be able to cleave all the different peptide bonds that are found within the proteins that we actually ingest. And the interesting thing about the trypsin molecule that we discussed earlier, trypsin doesn't only activate the chymotrypsinogen, it also activates many other zymogens. And so in a way we can imagine that trypsin is actually the master activator, which is responsible for actually activating the majority of the zymogens found inside our body. Now, the question is, what activates the trypsin itself? Well, the cells of our body basically produce a special type of enzyme known as enteropeptidase. 
So it's the enteropeptidase that is produced by our body that actually activates trypsin from trypsinogen. Remember, trypsinogen is the zymogen, the inactive form of trypsin. And when enteropeptidase basically proteolytically cleaves a bond in trypsin, the entire structure of the trypsinogen, or not trypsin, trypsinogen, the entire structure of the trypsinogen changes, and that creates the proper conformation of the active site that now allows that trypsin to basically carry out its activity. And what trypsin does is it activates not only four other different zymogen, but it also activates itself. Trypsin, once activated, basically goes on to nearby trypsinogen molecules and activates them to produce trypsin. So this is an amplification effect. And trypsin can also go on to activate proelastase into elastase, chymotrypsinogen into chymotrypsin, which we spoke about just a moment ago. Prolipase, which activates lipase, and lipase is used to basically break down the lipids that we ingest into our body. And finally, procarboxypeptidase into carboxypeptidase. So we see that trypsin is the master activator that proteolytically activates the majority of the digestive enzymes, including itself. And trypsin itself is activated by enteropeptidase. And it's the collective activity, the collective action of all these enzymes found inside our small intestine and the stomach that allows us to actually break down all different types of peptide bonds and all different types of proteins that we ingest into our body. So we see that enzymes can be controlled not only allosterically and not only via covalent modification methods, but also via proteolytic activation by using the technique we call proteolytic cleavage.